The Nissan S chassis is a really popular platform to mod. In fact, it's going to be the next Moto IQ project car. What's unique about our project car is it's going to be like a multi-use vehicle. Uh, not only does it have to be good at road racing, which is going to be its primary use, but we also want to have fun with it in drift. And if you're building a car to be really good at one particular purpose, this is really hard. So it was really hard to try to figure out uh, what to do about the front uh, suspension and steering geometry. Something that would work good for drifting is usually diametrically opposite of grip driving. But we discovered uh, GK Tech and all the offerings they make for the Nissan S chassis. And they produce, in my opinion, probably the best, most sophisticated front end angle kit, front suspension for the S chassis. I have a lot of experience with the S chassis. Um, I was the guy that engineered Dai Yoshihara's FD championship winning S13 back a few years ago. And um, back then, all the discoveries we made to make the car work well um, are incorporated into the parts here. Um, the difficult thing is we had to hand fabricate and hand make uh, all the parts in the front of his car. Now most people don't have the resources to do that kind of stuff, but GK Tech has like considered every aspect of what we used to have to do and custom make, and they've made it so you can just go and buy this stuff. Um, the amount of adjustability and flexibility in this system are pretty incredible. So. Let's get down to the parts and I'll walk you through them. The first part, um, like any angle kit, is the uh, knuckles. Now um, these knuckles are designed to uh, give you more steering angle, of course, but the geometry is a compromise between a drift car and a grip car in a good way. Now some of the um, other things is when you lower an S13, the roll center gets re really out of whack. Uh, the roll center is the point in space where the car rolls around. And if you use a stock knuckle, when you lower it, uh, that roll center point goes below ground level. And what's going on is uh, the roll center is the point in space where the car rolls around, but the center of gravity is the point in space where the uh, centrifugal force, to make it simple, kind of pulls on the car. And the distance between the two is called the roll couple. The roll couple is like a lever arm that actually rolls your car in the corner. So uh, with the stock knuckle, when you lower the car, the roll center goes below the ground, the, uh, and it goes down pretty fast. And the center of gravity only drops a little by the amount you're lowering the car. So the roll couple actually gets longer. So even though you're lowering the CG, you're lengthening the lever arm to roll the car over. So you're not necessarily getting rid of body roll and weight transfer too much. So what's cool about the GK Tech is that it has 50 millimeters of offset uh, vertically built into the knuckle. So you can lower the car about two inches and your roll center is going to be about in the same place as stock. Uh, the other cool thing is uh, where your tie rod bolts in, there's about 50 millimeters of bump steer offset. So when you lower the car, like you can lower it two inches and your bump steer and your roll center aren't really going to change and that's all good. So the next thing about the knuckle is the steering arm is a lot shorter. Uh, this is good because it gives you faster steering it also gives you more steering angle. That gets into the next thing. Having a car that could drift well isn't just having a lot of steering angle. A lot of it is the Ackerman uh, curve and controlling that. Um, to back up a little bit, what Ackerman is, is when you have a car and it's turning, if both tires turn equally in the turn, you would have a lot of drag on the front. And that's because the inside tire, the inside of the turn, needs to go at a tighter radius than the outside. So most cars have what you call Ackerman geometry in the steering. So when you go around a turn, the inside turns at a greater rate than the outside. Car rolls freely through the turn without much rolling resistance and all is fine. Um, 
But when you modify a car for a lot of steering angle, the Ackerman uh, buildup becomes nonlinear and all of a sudden your inside is going almost straight while your outside is many degrees lagging. And that causes a lot of drag in the front. And when you're drifting, how that's felt is all of a sudden the front of the car wants to slow down a lot as you're getting a big amount of scrub and the car does a slow spin that you can't recover from. So what you want in the drift car is you want some initial Ackerman and as the steering angle builds up and gets more extreme, you want the curve to come around to where the front's close to parallel steer again so the front can roll out of the drift. So we're doing a bunch of tricks so this happens. The first thing is we're running a um, tie rod with an offset steering rack spacer. Uh, this moves the tie rod in a more favorable position as it approaches uh, the more extreme full lock. Now your, your stock steering has about a little bit less than probably about 37 degrees of lock. The new GK Tech knuckle could do 50 degrees. So this is considerably more. To get the Ackerman from getting out of hand, one of the things we use is an offset tie rod spacer. Now your tie rod screws into here, and um, what it does is it actually moves the center of the tie rod forward. So as you approach the new, more increased uh, lock angle, it maintains more of a normal Ackerman curve. Uh, the next trick is GK Tech steering rack bushings. Now the stock Nissan bushings are made out of a really soft rubber and they let the rack move around a lot. Uh, this gives you a rubbery steering feel um, and the GK Tech rack bushings fix this because they're solid aluminum so the rack is held solidly in the chassis. Um, they also have an offset machined into them where they're thick on one side and thin on the other. In fact, they're so thin, it butts the um, steering rack right up against the cross member. So it moves the steering rack as forward as you can get it against the uh, cross member. So the steering rack relocation and the tie rod relocation makes your Ackerman curve so it goes around and starts becoming parallel as you approach super angles of lock. The other thing is these GK Tech knuckles are what they call the grip drift knuckle. So the geometry is a compromise between road racing and drifting. They have a pure road racing knuckle that has the same Ackerman geometry as stock. Uh, the the um, road race um, drift knuckle has um, maybe about half the Ackerman as stock. And what you could do, the way you could see it is when you look where it pivots on the lower ball joint, you could see that the um, steering uh, tie rod pickup point is offset slightly toward the inside of the car. Stock would be like about another maybe quarter inch over. Uh, they also make a pro drift knuckle that um, you know can go over 60 degrees of angle, and that one uh, has no Ackerman in it, so it's almost uh, parallel steer. Um, the thing about a pro drift knuckle, if you have it in a road race car, the lack of Ackerman causes the car to turn in poorly and to kind of have some mid-turn understeer. So you don't want to put the pro drift knuckle in a car that you're going to grip drive. Um, GK Tech is the only one that um, realizes these things and they're the only ones that have different knuckles tailored to the kind of driving you want to do, at least to my knowledge anyway. The other thing cool about GK Tech is they offer a tie rod that's longer than stock with more threads. Now uh, in both road racing and drifting you want more of a wider track and that helps reduce understeer. It helps you get uh, the negative camber you want without having a weird uh, steering access, and it gives you more room for angle. Um, so inevitably, you're, you're, um, you, you, you usually run out of tie rod adjustment. Well, the GK Tech tie rod is threaded all the way down. It has a lot more threaded area, so you can adjust fore and aft. And 
What's really cool about their kit is they come with uh, three different lengths of adjusters. Uh, the short one is here on the tie rod, but there's a medium length and a long one. So any combination of angle, uh, track width, and um, whatever else you can uh, think of, uh, GK Tech, um, their uh, tie rod kit comes with the things to deal with that. And what I like about that is, um, you know, we used to have to hand fabricate all this stuff, and we used to have to rethread, machine down and rethread the uh, tie rods. We used to have to make these, and uh, this is an incredible time saver. So, um, you know, it, it, it can, it, it really helps. Uh, the next cool thing about the GK Tech tie rods is um, they have this shank where you can adjust the tie rod height up and down and they have all these uh, spacers that you put on top of your uh, misalignment shim and that allows you to fine tune your tie rod location in the knuckle so you can adjust your uh, bump steer that way. Um, this is great because we used to have to drill the knuckle out, put a bolt in and hand machine spacers to do all this tuning but with a GK tick it has all the parts that you can tuned to your heart's content and not have to make anything. And that's a really big help. The other cool thing is the spherical bearings have um, these dust boots on them. And uh, spherical bearings are strong, they don't have play, but they're usually open to the elements so they could possibly wear quicker. But uh, you'll notice that there's dust boots on bearings on all their products. Uh, one of the things that the uh, having the offset uh, tie rod and the uh, offset steering rack helps prevent is uh, over centering. Now, over centering is kind of when uh, you're inside uh, the angle from, uh, I guess, here to here, uh, your angle gets so much that it becomes like a, a toggle. So, once this angle gets like this, it could just flex back and forth. And what happens is the steering sticks and uh, your inside wheel wobbles so it looks like something's broken on your car and you get this wicked vibration in the steering wheel. So offsetting the tie rod and offsetting the rack gives you uh, more leeway before you get the over-centering um, of your tie rod. So that's another cool reason to do it. The next big set of problems that GK Tech has totally uh, addressed is um, things to do with the lower control arm and the tension rod. Now GK Tech has totally eliminated the front tension rod. Um, they, they have a one piece control arm instead of a control arm and the tension rod. What this does is it gives a lot more space for angle. So you can run wider tires without worrying about the tire hitting the, uh, the tension rod. Uh, you can see this big old bow that's in there and that's to give you more room. I mean, that works for road racing and drifting. Um, wider tires are always a problem in the strut car because all the stuff that gets away and you have all this uh, room for tire clearance now. The other thing with drift cars is that you're pushing the geometry to the limit. So sometimes to get the combination of caster, trail offset, um, Ackerman and all that, you end up with the tire in kind of a forward position in the wheel well, and then that way you run into rubbing problems. So you run into tire hitting the fender, car looks kind of goofy, uh, clearance issues somewhere. Uh, so GK Tech, they have spherical bearings and they have a lot of adjustments. So you could adjust the track width and the fore and aft, like the caster offset, like 35 millimeters in any direction. Um, this allows you to center the wheel any way you want in the wheel well to get the maximum amount of travel. This is, this is huge, especially if you're running wide tires. GK Tech also makes these spacers, and you can put these spacers in the bolt and then uh, solidly move the lower control arm location fore and aft without, uh, without dicking around or making anything at all. So you can get just about any geometry combination through adjustment and you can get the control arm properly centered no matter what your 
other adjustments are. I mean, this is a pretty huge deal. We used to have to make uh, tension rods with weird bends, and uh, we used to have to make our own spacers, like spin them up on the lathe. The other cool thing about the GK Tech lower arm is um, instead of having a ball joint, you have a spherical bearing with this uh, uh, stub shaft. And what's good about the shaft is it's not uh, fixed like a ball joint. Uh, you could actually put it in here and you have this high misalignment spacer and you can adjust the position of it within the arm with uh, shims. So this gives you another point of adjustment if you want to play around with your bump steer and play around with your roll center. Um, you know, this gives it a tremendous amount of flexibility. You can have your car slammed on the ground and still have proper geometry because you have all this adjustment. And then on top of the shock towers, we're using a GK Tech caster camber plate. And what's cool about this is that this goes in the shock tower and the camber plate from whatever coilovers you want to use bolts to this, and then this bolts to the shock tower. So basically your, uh, your camber plate is underneath the shock tower and the amount of adjustment isn't limited by the uh, size of the hole anymore. So if you want to run extreme uh, kingpin angles or if you have a really wide track and you want to keep your steering axis from getting all wacky, you can slide the coil over a lot underneath the tower and um, you can keep your geometry no matter how extreme your angle and without having to cut holes or slots in your tower. Now um, a lot of you maybe if you're preparing your car to formula drift rules, formula drift doesn't allow you to um, modify the shock tower past the circle of the three strut bolts and that limits how much you could um, you know, uh, slot your tower to move your shock shaft. And a lot of guys in FD have this problem. Well, this thing lets you move it around without altering the top of the shock tower at all. Um, you can like maintain good geometry, like your um, steering axis inclination angle. If your track width is super wide, won't get out of whack because you can move it out. Uh, you can keep your wheel well centering of your strut you can move it probably a couple inches back and forth. Um, I mean, this is a pretty great thing. Now we used to do this on Dye's car and we used to have to custom make this CNC uh, plate. The plate we uh, actually designed and made and used on Dye's car is almost exactly this, but I mean, it costs a lot of money. And now you can just buy the same thing from GK Tech. Another cool thing is the control arm has a bolt-in adjustable steering stop. Now, you know, I was talking about tie rod over and wheel wobble and steering st sticking a, a little bit ago. And when you have an adjustable stop, you can put your steering stop to be right at the point before it sticks or starts to wobble. Now, we used to have this problem. Uh, anytime you have a car with a, a rear steer or the steering rack, uh, said in the back, you're going to have this problem. Uh, we had to custom make uh, steering stops and we had all these little plates that we could bolt together and it was a big hassle. And a lot of people that are like grassroots guys just live with the wobble and stick. Uh, but with GK Tech, with all the offset stuff to get your tire, tie rod position in a better place, plus these adjustable steering stops, you can uh, set everything to eliminate stick and wobble. And this is a cool thing that we did that uh, had to be all custom made and it wasn't that much, it was kind of a hassle to use, but I mean, it bolts right here and you can move it back and forth a little and in and out and just eliminate that problem. Finally, uh, you have this uh, anti-sway bar. Now, a lot of you guys take the sway bars off of your drift cars uh, because they get in the way of steering angle, but it's always been my belief that sway bars are essential in road racing, but really help in drifting too. Like, it really helps the car respond to your steering inputs and greatly helps the car in transitions and does a lot for your uh, stability. 
It also like probably helps prevent the front of the car from gripping up too much and making you spin. But so many people take their sway bars off and a lot of angle kits don't even have provisions for sway bars. Uh, what GK Tech has done is they run a really short sway bar uh, and they make it with splined ends, kind of just like a uh, Speedway Engineering uh, racing bar. So the sway bar is really short uh, and then they have like billet ends. When you make it out of billet, it, it gives you the ability to make pretty extreme angles. So the short bar with the billet end gives you the ability to get it completely out of the way of the tires. That way you could, um, you could have your angle and you can have your front sway bar. Um, this little uh, bend in the bar is offset. So if you have an LS swap, uh, with a front sump, you don't have to buy a re rear sump pan anymore. And if you have a 2JZ swap, uh, this, this bend gives you uh, plenty of room to run the bar and get away from your pan. The next thing is um, the GK Tech sway bar comes with this, these cool end links. It's all spherical bearings, uh, no rubber bushings or urethane bushings to bind and squish. Uh, there's three adjustment points on the bar to adjust the stiffness, which we think is pretty important because uh, you can adjust on the fly for uh, really quickly. And um, the control arm has um, holes for the sway bar so you could um, uh, make adjustments here and not have the end link be at an angle to mess up the effectiveness. So you can keep that end link vertical no matter how stiff you have it adjust, adjusted. This is a great thing. I mean, those of you that have adjustable sway bars on various cars, and you know when you're at the extreme of the, the adjustment, the end link, the angle can get pretty out of hand, and that kind of screws up your bar effectiveness, but not the uh, GK Tech. It, um, you can always have the link facing like at a 90 degree angle for maximum bar effectiveness. Uh, finally, the lower bracket is on uh, threads, so you can move it up and down. So this way, if you corner weight your car and the car's ride heights are kind of staggered, uh, you can shim this so you have zero bar preload, uh, even if the car's all staggered out. And that's a big deal to keep your handling even from left to right. This is the main suspension stuff. I mean, as you can see, G GK Tech is considered anything you could possibly want to do. Um, I know a lot of us have different opinions on how to set up cars. Uh, we have different ideas and um, how the car should behave and different drivers have different styles. But GK Tech has the flexibility that if you know what you're doing, I mean, you can actually make this car handle anyway. Um, and there's no limit to the amount of adjustments. Um, I don't think any other angle kit on the market has this much flexibility. We got another product from GK Tech. Uh, this is your master cylinder brace. And what this does, uh, this bolts to your shock tower. And then there's a bolt that goes in here that uh, butts up against the back of your master cylinder. When you brake really hard, your master cylinder is bolted to your firewall. And that's just uh, thin sheet metal. And your leg with that big lever arm, you know, you can generate 300 pounds of force easily. And it actually flexes the firewall um, and it, your body equates that to mush in the brake pedal and uh, not such good brake feel. Now a lot of us get braided steel lines to try to improve brake feel, but we found that by putting this brace up against the master cylinder and preventing it from moving due to firewall flex, actually makes probably the biggest difference in pedal fuel out of anything you can do. This thing is a pretty much a godsend and you can get it for your Nissan S chassis to be a straight on bolt in. Uh, finally, uh, we got these five bolt conversion hubs from Njuku Racing. Um, five, five bolt uh, is probably the way to go in the S chassis because it gives you a way bigger choice of uh, wheels you can run. Uh, offset sizes and brands. Um, you can also have uh, an easier time finding uh, brake rotors like anything developed for the Z car. 
uh, has the same bolt pattern, you can use it. Uh, we're going to run the Z-Car StopTech brake system uh, on our S chassis, and this allows it to go right in without having to redrill the hat. Um, we like the Njiku set, setup because, uh, mostly because it um, uses OEM Nissan bearings, not like cheap Chinese bearings that most of the, these things have. Um, and Jiku has a, about three different levels of these, so they make a cheap one for the budget guy, but this is their top of the line with OEM Nissan bearings. So that's it for the GK Tech front suspension stuff. I hope you found this interesting. I mean, we're really interested in this and really stoked. Um, I mean, basically, GK Tech has considered everything that we ever had to and came out with a well-engineered kit and it'll allow you to set up the front of your S chassis anyway. Um, stay tuned. Our next video about this stuff will be their innovative rear suspension stuff. And the rear suspension stuff also considers every single aspect that we used to have to think about in the pro car too. So until next time, uh, check out our uh, site, Moto IQ. We have a lot of cool articles there. And if you like what we're doing video-wise, don't forget to mash the subscribe button and follow us. You won't be sorry.